The objective of this was to decap a chip, try different techniques. One was physical abrasion, and the other one was through heat to decompose the thermoset plastic. I did not really want to try um, any kind of acid. I don't have acid. I don't think it's a good idea. Concentrated nitric acid that could dissolve anything is probably not the best idea anyway. And it's difficult to get in most countries, most places I can't get it. So basically I expected that it would have a repeated pattern. And um, yeah, just have a look at it. Um, not much more than that. The stick of DDR3 memory. Um, what is it? PC 231333 Either way, it's dead, it doesn't work it has some defective contacts here It just doesn't come on Motherboard doesn't come on with it So I'm going to try to pull off one of these BGA chips um, I'm not sure if I can see the side of it It is possible to see those balls Anyway, I'm going to pull out some of those One of these BGA chips, have a look at it Just to see what it's well, how much contacts it has, a couple of things. I don't know how much layers this board has. Obviously, it's quite a few. Um, but yeah, just because it could be done. Well, we soldered the chip. Interestingly, it's 39, um, 13 down so by 3, so 39 and 39. 78 pins. This is really, really thin. I should probably mic it, but it looks like about I don't know, 1.2 or 0.3 millimeters um, with the case in. So that's a really thin piece of silicone inside here. I'm not sure if it is possible to physical abrasion to see inside. Um, it would be repeated cells, but it might be useful to try it. Um, I definitely don't have concentrated nitric acid or any of these things, so and I'm not going to even try that. That's just not a good idea. So I'll try physical abrasion and maybe I'll get some views of what's inside. It was expected that physical abrasion would be difficult. I expected that the edges would have gotten curved. That's exactly what happened. The edges tapered off. I, the middle, the epoxy, well, thermoset plastic case still remained as could be seen. Not that revealing. Not that much could have been found. Started off with 250 grit emery, and after a period of time, not getting very far, I went to 120, which is really excessive. But still, it really wasn't as useful as I thought. I did take the time to do it on the chip on board because holding a chip is difficult. Chip on board, well, obviously it's already held in place and a flat uh, surface was used in grinding but inevitably you push at an angle if you look at the top right hand corner of the chip it looks like i broke the silicon too so yeah not the best process so on to the second process at hand this is the same chip um well basically burnt I uh, put it over a fire and it separates so oh, I don't think this is thin. Alright, so this piece comes off fairly easily. I'm uh, not sure why, not sure wo what it is, it just comes off. Um, but yeah, if you look now you can see part of the chip here. And it's coming off, this next piece is coming off. Uh, the thermoset plastic has burnt, it's crumbling, it's just a matter of trying to get it off without breaking the actual chip. Interesting technique, Terry is, well, the temperature didn't reach high enough to melt silicone, so it should be okay. Well, maybe it's a good Terry, maybe it's a bad Terry. A little bit more closely at the two pieces that came out. You have the silicone chip, the back side being very shiny, and this is the side of the chip that was on the board. You can see the center piece um, and the contacts. This is a bit close up, much better view. The contacts again visible and the middle bar which is really for setting the height that uh, the chip press on the board so that the balls contact correctly. Going further now, this is the other side of that same plate that fell out that is not part of the chip silicon piece of the chip itself. 
there's some whole like structures in the center there i really don't know what it is for i'm not really sure what exactly is the material of this and you know, what's its real purpose apart from stabilizing the chip and attaching it onto the um, pcb so i guess it has to be obviously useful and there may be where the wires come out or how it all routes under the heat nothing remained and there is no way to tell if there were wires there where they were how it ran so, this is a picture of the chip itself as you can see it's 2468 by 216 grids as expected they are repeated patterns um, so 16 grids at 500 um, it's eight chips at four gigabytes so 500 a chip um, and 16 grids in there so let me see what the math of that is can't look it off the top of my head but anyway um this is now a close-up of one of them as you can see it wasn't really clean a hundred percent fully there's still some thermoset uh, plastic there that's stiff and difficult to remove but it's pretty good and i mean i don't have higher magnification than this anyway so i'm not going to see much more than this it's just that it is interesting to see how they've put this together and you look at their alternating bands and it could be counted and possibly reverse engineered not that i'm trying to do that it, just to see an idea of how it looks and it the entire process of this thing didn't really take very long it's just a couple minutes so uh, just for curiosity more than anything else one final thing that was done is measuring the actual chip it's not square it's a bit rectangular dimensions were 0.9 centimeters 9 millimeters by 8 millimeters by 0.2 millimeters thick it's pretty thin around 8 tau really quite quite a thin piece of uh, silicon maybe it just doesn't require that many layers and uh, that gets done in a very small footprint well, obviously it works